Lawmakers in Great Britain have announced they want to they want to allow one intelligence agency there to monitor all phone calls, text messages, and emails of all citizens, not just for people under any sort of formal investigation. Everybody, the police now to monitor everyone. The agency would still need permission, but critics say the newly proposed law would dramatically increase the, increase the power of the British police and intelligence agencies. Under this new law. Investigators could examine phone and online records to see who folks are contacting and for how much time. Agents could theoretically track anybody anywhere in the United Kingdom. The Chief Fox Sport correspondent Jonathan Hunt is with us. How would this work? Well, they want to get access to basically everything you do online, all your emails, all your social media. And what this new law would do is require Internet service providers to install the systems which essentially harvest what is called pocket data. That would mean that they could see what websites you visit, who you're talking to anytime online. According to a home office spokesperson, the cops and the intelligence agencies need to do this because, quote, it is vital that police and security security services are able to obtain communications data in certain circumstances to investigate serious crime and terrorism and to protect the public. We need to take action to maintain the continued availability of communications data as technology changes. So their point being that they have these laws in place for cell phones already, now they have to have new laws to reflect the way people are really communicating. Sure. But people who care anything about privacy, as those of you in the UK would say, must be up in arms. There, a lot of alarm bells are ringing, perhaps best summed up by the director of something called Big Brother Watch, who says, quote, the government has offered no justification for what is unprecedented intrusion into our lives, nor explained why promises made about civil, liber civil liberties are being casually junked. The silence from Home Office ministers has been deafening. It is remarkable that they wish to pry into everything we do online, but seem intent on avoiding any public discussion. That is from Nick Pickles, the director of Big Brother Watch. He says that this kind of law would be more suited to a country like Iran or China. Sure. All right, Jonathan, thanks. Judge Napolitano is with us, our senior judicial analyst, Judge Andrew Napolitano. You know, we, so often when we talk about what someone consider to be an invasion of privacy or, or over-regulation, over-control of the government by the people, if it's about matters of terrorism, something like that, so many of our viewers are like, oh, well, that's fine, but don't let the government come in and regulate anything else. I, I've never understood how they can separate one from the other, and if they want to be all over, I mean, why don't they just put us all in a big cage and just watch us? Well, Great Britain is the most watched country in the world. Yeah. There are over 500,000 cameras that go 24-7, many with microphones that are in London uh, alone. The only good thing about this is it's going to be debated by Parliament. It's not going to be imposed by some, uh, some executive order by, uh, by David Cameron. It doesn't have the authority to do so. And perhaps it will be defeated by, uh, by Parliament. But if this passes, there'll be no privacy left because they'll be able to examine your, your Internet habits without having to demonstrate a reason for doing so. We just want to know what Jonathan Hunt is up to. We don't believe he's doing anything wrong. We have no evidence of criminality. There isn't an iota of evidence he has anything to do with terrorism, but we're interested in this guy. Hmm. So give us permission to follow all of his email habits. That's what will happen if this becomes law. Parliament has to go through it first, and we'll keep you updated on what happens. Judge, thank yes. you. Uh, this is just in. <coughs> Excuse me. How are your allergies? Man, what a season. The Supreme Court has just handed down a major ruling about strip searches at U.S. jails. Have you heard about this? That debate is next. The U.S. Supreme Court has ruled strip searches are perfectly legal in U.S. jails, even for minor offenses. The justices voted 5-4 to four against a New Jersey man who claimed corrections officials violated his civil rights when they strip searched him after arresting him for an unpaid fine. Our legal panel is back. Fox News legal analyst Mercedes Colwin, defense attorney Randy Zellin, as well as the Fox News judicial analyst uh, Andrew Napolitano. You know, police have someone arrested. They're in a facility. Uh, they want to make sure this person doesn't have contraband or something that could hurt the authorities, and the authorities make the argument we ought to be able to strip search anybody. Supreme Court agrees. Absolutely. There's, t there's contagious there's infectious diseases, there are weapons. They could possibly be part of a gang. All of these issues, all these concerns, yeah. they have those issues. You have a controlled population, very few COs, correction officers that are patrolling. It has to be done. But here's the other side of the argument I didn't pay a fine and you got digits up in me. Are you out of your mind? 
I couldn't have said it any better myself. <laughs> we look for individualized justice. And by the way, you know the back to the back story here? The unpaid fine that they strip searched this guy for and did the digit search, he had paid the fine. So not only was he going through this for an unpaid traffic ticket, it was a traffic ticket that they he didn't proof that he paid. Randy, they it's didn't a, know. That's, that's a joke. Then they're not we look look for, hold on, wait, hold on. It we has look, to excuse be. me. Until you know, you exactly. keep yourself out of my cell. How about that? <laughs> We talk I'm about, just saying. We talk hey, about individualized. About safety, wait, though. wait, wait, wait. We talk about individualized justice. We go through bail hearings where we treat people as individuals, but you're going to treat so you know a guy who has an unpaid parking Randy, ticket the same way as a murderer. You know, it's ridiculous. In, we're talking about safety here. That guy, how do you we know? Check for do you lice? know the, you the don't got to do digits up me what about, check for lice. What about shanks? What about weapons? What about knives? Uh, what about in your... For and that's an unpaid they do, parking that's ticket? That's where they Come do on. a cavity Come search. And by the way, they can't make those types of determinations. We're talking about snap decisions, all about safety. That ain't no snap decisions. Do you want to do that? Come they on, Randy, give me a break. They could have not locked him up for the parking ticket. Judge, that, are you surprised up, at all? Up for six days. Guess what? The case is going to go back to a trial court because the Supreme Court opinion is ambiguous. Chief Justice Roberts agreed with the majority and said you have to look at these people as individuals, and Justice Alito said the same thing. Yeah. So we haven't seen the end of it yet. All right. Thank you all. It was an interesting day at the White House yesterday. President Obama commenting on the health care overhaul for the first time since the Supreme Court took up his case. The president stood up for his law saying if it was overturned, it would be considered judicial activism. I just remind conservative commentators that for years what we've heard is the biggest problem on the bench was judicial activism or a lack of judicial restraint. That uh, an unelected uh, group of, of people would somehow overturn uh, uh, a duly constituted and, and passed uh, law. Uh, well, there's a, a good example. He's calling the Supreme Court an unelected group of people. Judge Andrew Napolitano joins us live. What was he doing yesterday? Well, you know, we were scratching our heads when, when we were watching this and, and, and had it played over and over again because this is a graduate of Harvard Law School, the head of the Harvard Law Review. He taught constitutional law at the University of Chicago, two of the best law schools in the mm -hmm. country, and he's rejecting a basic premise of American law that has not been seriously questioned in 175 years, right. which is this. The courts have the right to review what the Congress does and what the president does. And if the courts find that that behavior unconstitutional, they can void, they can invalidate what the Congress and the president mm -hmm. does. That's our system. That's what preserves the Constitution against the tyranny of the majority. No president has questioned this since Andrew Jackson. <laughs> Could he possibly have been saying, look, if this is, if this is not upheld, the ruling would be illegitimate. And I'm really kind of talking to Justice Kennedy over there, who probably is a swing vote. You got three months. I vote. You say it's okay. That's why we have a life tenured independent judiciary so that it cannot be cowed by politicians, no matter how well intended the politicians could be. Look, if this is invalidated, the president can say it was invalidated by the court, not by me. If this is upheld, the president can say, look, even a court appointed by a Republican president's upheld this. But for him to question the power and ability and authority of the court to review it and to decide if it's unconstitutional is incomprehensible. Kind of looks like he's declared war on the Supreme Court. It kind of looks like he's desperate. Okay. Uh, he's a judge. It's his opinion. Judge, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Steve. Well, President Obama, with some comments on the Supreme Court yesterday that's making some headlines today, he predicted the justices will uphold his health care law, even as he said, overturning it will amount to judicial overreach. Take a listen. Ultimately, I'm confident that the Supreme Court uh, will not take what would be an unprecedented, extraordinary, step of overturning uh, a law that was passed by uh, a strong majority of uh, a democratically elected Congress. And I, I just remind conservative commentators that for years what we've heard is the biggest problem on the bench was judicial activism or a lack of judicial restraint, that uh, an unelected a uh, group of, of people would somehow overturn uh, uh, 
a duly constituted and, and passed uh, law. Well, this isn't the first time the president has challenged the high court. You may remember uh, back in 2010, his State of the Union address after the high court overturned campaign finance restrictions in the Citizens United decision. He said this. With all due deference to separation of powers, last week the Supreme Court reversed a century of law that I believe will open the floodgates for special interests, including foreign corporations, to spend without limit in our elections. I don't think American elections should be bankrolled by America's most powerful interests, or worse, by foreign entities. They should be decided by the American people. And I'd urge Democrats and Republicans to pass a bill that helps correct some of these problems. Joining me now, Fox Senior Judicial Analyst Judge Andrew Napolitano. Already shaking your head a little bit. Judge, what do you make of the President's comments? Well, look, the, the President is entitled to predict that the Supreme Court is going to uphold uh, the statute. The President is entitled to make a strong constitutional argument in favor of the statute. But when the President questions whether or not the Supreme Court has the authority to invalidate the statute, the, the president railing against unelected people invalidating what has been enacted by Congress belies the history of the country and the president's education of that history. Wait a minute. Are you saying this is the first time we've seen a president challenge the court in such a way? No. It is not the first time we've seen the, the president challenge the court. It is the first time since Andrew Jackson that the president has challenged, has suggested that the court doesn't even have the ability to overturn what Congress has enacted and he has signed simply because they are, quote, unelected. The president is a graduate of Harvard Law School, where he was the chairman of the Law Review. The president is a former instructor in constitutional law at the University of Chicago Law School, two of the best law schools in the country. He knows that this is our system. It is our system that unelected, life-tenured judges get to decide what the law and what the Constitution mean, and they have the power to invalidate what the Congress and what the President does. That they have that power was challenged by him yesterday for the first time since Andrew Jackson in 1835. The President said that if the Supreme Court to overturn this health care law, it would be an unprecedented and extraordinary step. Is that accurate? No. And, and that's uh, why a lot of us who watch this for a, a living, whether you, you believe this statute is constitutional or not, are so animated by what he said. It absolutely would not be unprecedented for the Supreme Court to overturn an act of Congress. The Supreme Court recently overturned an act of Congress, which made it a crime to bring guns within a thousand feet of schools under the Commerce Clause because the Supreme Court said bringing a gun near a school is not an act of commerce, it's a crime. And the states can prosecute this far better than the federal government can. That was a duly enacted, popularly enacted, bipartisan supported piece of legislation that the Supreme Court invalidated because it found that Congress didn't have the power to do it under the Constitution. And President Obama knows this. Now, some would suggest this is an election year. This is politics at play. And the tension between the executive branch and the judicial branch is actually a good thing, that we want to see tension between the different branches of government. That's our government working. What would you say? I would say that uh, politically, the president, if he loses this, let's just say hypothetically, Jenna, it's a five to four vote invalidating the individual mandate. And let's say the five justices were all appointed by Republican presidents then President Obama probably, probably could make some political hay out of this during the campaign by railing against Republican appointees to the court. But he cannot, with intellectual honesty, suggest that they don't have the power, the authority to invalidate it. He could say it was political. He could say they were wrong. But he cannot say there are, that they are without the authority to do it. Some important insight for us today, Judge. Thank you very much, as always. Pleasure, Jenna. Be done with it. Well, host Rush Limbaugh now blasting President Obama for declaring that the Supreme Court would be engaging in, quote, judicial activism if it threw the health care law out. Listen. He has totally and incorrectly def misdefined uh, or in incorrectly defined judicial activism. Judicial activism. Nobody ever accuses 
judges of judicial activism for following the Constitution. Judicial activism is when judges do not follow the Constitution, when they legislate from the bench, when they write their own law. The court must understand is one of his sound bites. No, the court must not, does not, have to listen to you. What is this? The court must understand. That is a threat. How many of you think it possible that Obama will make a trip to the Supreme Court before the vote, before the final vote? Can you see it happening? I can. Very interesting. Uh, Rush Limbaugh yesterday. Let's bring in Judge Andrew Napolitano, our Fox News senior judicial analyst. Judge, uh, welcome. Um, I know that you have a lot of thoughts on this. Good morning to you. Good to have I'm you here. I'm chuckling because our good friend, nobody could say it quite as directly and poignantly as our good friend and colleague, Rush. What did you think about his statement in, in terms of this, you know, uh, the president, in his opinion, not understanding what judicial activism really is? Well, there's another definition of judicial activism, and that is when the court rules the way you don't want it to rule, you accuse them of being judicial activists. That's a bit of a snarky definition. But what Rush said is true. It is profoundly the job of the court to enforce the Constitution, whether it's popular or not. That's why they are life tenured, so they don't have to concern themselves with the popularity of their decision. In that respect, Rush is correct, and he's, and he's wise to make this a comment as poignantly as he made it. In terms of the president saying the court must understand, Rush is also right on the mark. The court does not have to listen to the president. He, is, he should not be threatening or admonishing them. And if he shows up at their doorstep and tries to talk to them about this case or play nice-nice to them in public, they should lock the door and not see him. They can socialize with him after they take their summer break. You know, I, I thought it was interesting, and Rush ta uh, touched on this in an earlier soundbite of his that we played, a and it goes to the issue of President Obama talking about people with pre-existing conditions, children uh, with diseases and families that don't have the money to, you know, pay for their, uh, their treatment and things along those lines. He was appealing to sort of their sense of sympathy uh, in this case of pre-existing conditions. I is that appropriate, in your opinion? Well, the president is entitled to make political statements to uh, advance his chances for getting reelected. But the Supreme Court will have a deaf ear with respect to anything he or anybody else, for that matter, says that does not come to them through the ordinary channels under their rules. Look, they read newspapers and they watch television like the rest of us, so they are certainly aware of what he said. Will they take it into account? Will they put it in that part of their brains to which they refer when they deliberate on this case? Absolutely not, and they shouldn't. Rush was weighing in also on, on his uh, thoughts on whether or not there was a leak, whether President Obama knows how that sort of preliminary vote went on Friday. Of course, you know, we may never know uh, the answer to that question. What do you think, though? Well, what's your assessment? I think the uh, system is ironclad. I, I know of no leak. Uh, about the ultimate outcome of a case in modern times. Even a case as controversial as Roe versus Wade, which was argued in September of 72 and released in January of 73, mm -hmm. there was no leak whatsoever. Uh, I think the fact that there's been a leak have, uh, has been uh, rumors uh, uh, perpetrated by the president's own people. Interesting. Judge Napolitano, as always, thanks so much for weighing in. We'll my, see you soon. My pleasure. Well, time running out for the Justice Department. It's facing a Thursday deadline to explain whether the administration thinks judges could strike down federal laws. The president's warning for the Supreme Court on its health care law decision sparked this whole thing, and a number of justices got back to and said, you have some explaining to do, and get explaining by, uh, by Thursday to the judge and what he makes of these judges and their request. You know, usually when the president says something at a press conference in a, in a year when he's running for re-election, it doesn't get inside a courtroom. It's not like the government's lawyers said this to a court or the government's lawyers said this in writing. But yet, what he said was so profound and so contrary to over 200 years of settled law 
that it struck a raw nerve with these judges in Houston who basically said, before we go any further, do you recognize our authority to strike down portions of this law but that they we all find unconstitutional? They Republican judges. They so will. the rap against them is, well, they have a political act. I'll, I'll make another rap against them. Judges shouldn't get involved in politics. They probably shouldn't have even concerned themselves with what the president said. But they said did in a because they said the president got involved in their stuff. So now the president's involved, the attorney general's involved. Look, he's been ordered to submit a three page letter, single space, no less. He's got to fill the three pages, he can't fill more, explaining, either justifying the president's position, which would be impossible to justify. What if he doesn't? Well, theoretically, Theoretically, he could be held in contempt because it was a direct order that the three judges voted uh, that was directed at the attorney general. Look, the attorney general himself, and, and you and I have disagreed with him many times. He's a former judge. He knows that the president was speaking in a hyperbolic way. He knows that the court has the right to strike down unconstitutional law, and he's going to say that tomorrow at noon. What is going on with the president and the way he's been speaking out against the court? My cynical opinion is some little birdie in there uh, gave wind to the possibility you're going to lose this thing. And, and I'm, this, I, I have no proof of this. I'm, this well, is my thing. So, so now, 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 I'm thinking after, after that, he, he is now putting them on the spot in a different way than he did on the floor of the House when he ripped them a new one. Um, wh what is that about? I think the president is dangerously close to totalitarianism. A few months ago, he was saying, the Congress doesn't count. The Congress doesn't mean anything. I'm going to rule by decree and by administrative regulation. Now he's basically saying the Supreme Court doesn't count. It doesn't matter what they think. They can't review our legislation. That would leave just him as the only branch of government standing. So I think he has some problems with understanding the Constitution or accepting limitations on his power. Look, they are equal branches of the government, but with respect to what the law means and what the Constitution means, the court is superior to the president. But other presidents have survived battles with yes, the Supreme they, Court. They have. Will this one? They, he probably, well, I don't know if he'll get reelected. But I, no president in modern times has questioned their authority. They've questioned the way the authority's been exercised. In other words, they've questioned their decisions and all, but, but not... Not their, not their right to make the decision. Correct. This, this is an extreme view of the, of the Supreme Court and the Constitution, one that has not been articulated since Andrew Jackson was in the White House. Wow. wow. You were there for that. One. I was there. Yes, I was there, but I did not advise him to upset. say that. Yeah. I told him not to say it. Right. Like one of those like, white wigs on the nerds. Uh, Judge Napolitano, thank you. Pleasure. Gretch? Judge? The President's Department of Justice, they only have until 1 p.m. today to issue a statement to the Federal Appeals Court if they agree with the President that it would be inappropriate for the Supreme Court to strike down the federal health care law. Fox News Senior Judicial Analyst Judge Andrew Napolitano is here for my many questions on this topic. <laughs> Good to see you. No, I was, we I was emailing you uh, in the middle of the night right. saying, okay, so <clears throat> this federal judge in Texas heard what the president said about it's calling the court activists. Right, it's a panel of three judges. A panel of three judges, but the one decided to call out the Department of Justice lawyer in a Texas court the other day and said, you know, do you agree with what the president said? And by the way, I expect by Thursday at 1 o'clock a three-page single-space document about what the Department of Justice's beliefs are. If right? the press, if the yes, yes, you've described exactly what happened. Except that the order for the three-page document came from three judges, not just this okay. one. They went back, they deliberated on it, they voted, and they signed, they issued an order. If the president had said it's constitutional, and it would be foolish and wrong for the court to invalidate it, that's a perfectly legitimate argument for the president to make. But he didn't say that. He said the court is without authority to invalidate this statute. That is an unacceptable, utterly inaccurate, absurd statement to come from a president, from a lawyer, from a former professor of constitutional law who taught this very subject at one of the best law schools in the country. Okay, so the question I had yesterday was, now the Department of Justice has to come up with this three-page document. Right. What happens if they don't present it at 1 o'clock today? They, they would risk being held in contempt. And because this was a direct order to the attorney general himself, Eric Holder, it wasn't just an order to the Justice Department. It was an order to that guy who wasn't in the courtroom at the time. He could be held in contempt 
by these federal judges. There, as recently as a year ago, uh, Judge Martin Feldman in uh, New Orleans held the Secretary of the Interior in contempt for failing to process drilling permits as Judge Feldman had ordered him to do. But here's the thing. You believe that no lawyer for the Justice Department would take seriously what the president said. Right. That they would agree with the way in which the Constitution is written. Yes, but because Eric they Holder, understand 200 years of well settled, essentially unchallenged but, law. But Eric Holder yesterday, our Attorney General, called the President's comments appropriate. Well, he, here's the task for Eric Holder he has to separate politics from the law. And, and politics, what the President said at his press conference, really shouldn't seep into the courtroom. Attorney General Holder will enhance the credibility of the government, his own personal credibility, if he keeps politics out of this. Right. Exit question. This three-page document comes into the court today. Every single word is going to be parsed, oh, right? Be, Speaking gonna... of politics, we're, journalists and everyone around the world is going to be looking at this document to try and analyze it. Do you agree with that? Yes, I do believe uh, that that will happen. I think that the president really believes the statute is going to go down. I think he read the same transcripts and listened to the same oral arguments the rest of us did, and he's sort of preparing the political road for attacking the judiciary for doing its job. All right, very fascinating topic. We'll all be waiting at 1 p.m. to see what happens. Judge, have a great day. Pleasure. Happy Easter to you. Oh, you as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Greg. Thanks. Now the unusual public back and forth in, uh, goings on involving President Obama and some sitting judges. Earlier this week, the president apparently irked some federal judges over comments about the Supreme Court and its expected decision on the health care law. Here, listen to this. I'm confident that the Supreme Court uh, will not take what would be an unprecedented, extraordinary step of overturning uh, a law that was passed by uh, a strong majority of uh, a democratically elected Congress. Uh, and I'm pretty confident that this, uh, this court will recognize that uh, and not take that step. Well, frankly, that's not accurate. It's not unprecedented. And the White House is now softening its stance. Spokesman Jay Carney says the president did not question the court's authority and that he was only commenting on previous decisions. But as I mentioned, a panel of federal judges requested a formal response from the White House. And today, the Justice Department complied. Shannon Bream with the news. She's in Washington. These, these, what did these judges ask the Justice Department to do exactly? Well, Chef, during oral arguments Tuesday, federal judge Jerry Smith asked the DOJ lawyer on the case for a letter, no less than three pages, single spaced, specifically referencing the president's remarks and whether or not unelected federal judges can strike down federal laws. In the response today, signed by the attorney general, the DOJ quickly noted the principle that yes, judges do have that authority, but added this, quote, the courts accord particular deference when evaluating the appropriateness of the means Congress has chosen to exercise its enumerated powers, including the Commerce Clause, to accomplish constitutional ends. The letter ends. The president's remarks were fully consistent with the principles described herein. Bottom line, yes, federal judges can overturn laws, but they should be very deferential to laws that Congress has passed. I talked with a former clerk to Judge Smith, that judge down in Texas. Tom Dupree says the DOJ submitted the only answer it could have. Here's what he told me. There's no other answer the attorney general could have given. Taking any different position really would have been an earthquake for our constitutional structure. And this was absolutely the only answer there is, the only answer that he could have given. And he gave it. All right, so no real surprises in the letter, Shep, but the DOJ has met its deadline. All right, Shannon Bream, live in Washington. Shannon, thanks. Let's get to Judge Napolitano on this. Our senior judicial analyst, Judge Andrew Napolitano, was with us. I, I guess let's take this in chronological order. The, right. What the president said it's hard to imagine any president backing legislation and then not saying that he does and he hopes the Supreme Court doesn't overturn it. The unprecedented part was what was inaccurate. Right. And plain the, and simple. Right. And, and the inaccurate part, and, and he's a very intelligent guy. He went to Harvard Law School and he taught at the University of Chicago Law School, so he was probably saying this for political consumption. The inaccurate part was that it would be unprecedented for federal judges or justices to overturn unconstitutional uh, legislation. The inaccurate part was to suggest that because judges are unelected, they cannot interfere with legislation even if it's unconstitutional. But just as inappropriate, if I may, in my view. Yeah, I was about to ask you about the judges themselves. Okay, you, you have three federal judges sitting in Houston. In the middle of an oral argument, one of them <clears throat> says, you, you are from the government. Do you agree with what your boss said? Well, her boss is the president of the United States. He made a political statement 2,000 miles away. 
Uh, he didn't say it in the courtroom. It wasn't in a document filed in the case. Judges should stay out of politics. When they get involved in the political fray, they lose their credibility. That's one side of this. The other side of this is the president's statement was so profoundly erroneous, it struck a judicial nerve mm. in people that really shouldn't have had their nerves struck. It, I guess there's no way for any of us to decide or to make it to make a a definitive statement on whether the president was trying to sway the court's ruling, but it doesn't sound like that's the kind of thing Supreme Court justices are are usually uh, so malleable with. I, I really don't think that Supreme Court justices would be swayed by political statements. They'll be swayed by the volume of materials they read. Shep, it's two piles, each two feet high. That's Ugh. the volume of, of materials that have been submitted in this case. They're swayed by the arguments uh, at oral argument. They're swayed by their values and their understanding of the Constitution. And they're swayed by history. They don't make rulings for today or for tomorrow. They make rulings that they want to make sense 10 and 20 and 100 years from now. What's your sense of where this goes? My sense is that Justice Kennedy was not engaged in a game yeah. and that he truly expressed what he feels and that he believes that this legislation has exceeded the authority the Constitution gave to Congress and by a five to four vote, this legislation will be invalidated. That doesn't mean the president can't make some political hay out of it, but it does mean that his signature piece of legislation, if my prediction is correct, big if, will go down. We'll see. Judge Napolitano, great to see Pleasure, you. Pleasure, Shep. Happy Easter to you. Thank you very much. It's coming up quick. The bunny, man. <laughs> the niece and nephew excited about the bunny.